Here with our pal, Strike Force middleweight champion Luke Rockhold. Luke, the hardest part, first part of the hardest part's over. How was the weight cut? Uh, the weight cut uh, went pretty smooth, but uh, it's always tough. You know, it's uh, it's never it's never easy. To get all that that Skeletor look. The eyes start sucking back, <laughs> um, but I'm starting to come back a little bit. I don't know. We'll we'll, uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll feel I'll feel just like last time. It's the same same cut as last time. I felt. You know, I just I have a pretty strict diet when it comes to this time, and uh, so it all comes off pretty smooth. What's the key right now? What do you do to to replenish your body and make sure you're 100 percent when they ring the bell? Uh, the key is uh, I just uh, keep keep rehydrating. I have plenty of uh, I got my Pedialyte, so I do like three Pedialytes and uh, a bunch of coconut water, and, and just slow slowly with the protein. I got you know mixed greenish protein, nasty looking shake, but it actually tastes pretty good. Do the but so so easy with the with the proteins and stuff. You know a lot of sodium and whatnot to kind of slowly hold it down. So it's just a slow process. I, I have a lot of liquid proteins and a couple hard things, and then I'll sit on this with liquids for about two and a half hours or so, and then we'll have a good dinner. I always do steak dinner, so I don't know that's my thing. One final thing on the weight cut, then we'll get to Jardine. KJ Nunes has described the last half hour before you step on the scale as the worst cotton mouth you can picture, dry mouth. Do do fans even understand what you guys put yourself through? How bad is it for the last hour? Dry mouth, dehydration, everything else. Yeah, the, the last uh, half hour, 45 minutes, hour, whatever it is, you know, it's just it just starts to accumulate on you. Your stomach starts eating at you, and you're just like, oh my god, let's let's hurry it up, let's get to the scale. They always prolong the, the weigh-ins, you know. It's yeah. just like really like you're watching the time, you make sure they want to start like right on right on time, and start bitching and this and that. But you know, it's it's it sucks. It's uh, uh, yeah, I'm, no one's gonna be able to know what it feels like until they do it. And the cotton mouth, you're like, especially if you're always like, you're like right on weight, so you're always trying to get that couple little spits out. Yeah. You know, just to make sure, just to make sure the scale's not funky on you. So uh, those uh, those spits don't really come out easy. You like sit there, you're like. <laughs> you have to like shake them off. You know, big old white white chunks. <laughs> messed up. Hey, will you watch video on Jardine tonight, or as far as the game planning goes, is all of that done, and now it's just get your rest, get rehydrated, get some food in you, and get ready for tomorrow night? I'm going to watch a little bit of a little bit of footage. I, I brought some stuff with me, so I, I'm a big believer in homework, and uh, I'm beating things into your head, but uh, for the most part, it's just resting and, uh, you know, thinking about it, but, you know, there, there's some downtime tonight. I might check a, check a few things, last minute things, but I've, I've got a pretty good game plan and uh, I know I'm going to approach this fight and uh, I think I got the right game plan. When you fight a guy like Jardine who has so much experience, does it almost benefit you because you have such a vast array of tapes you can watch? Uh, it helps a little bit, but like with a guy like Keith Jardine, he's, he's very uh, unorthodox and it's hard to read, hard to pick up on. I just focus on what, what his, his most dangerous assets are and, uh, and I find those and, and then his weaknesses too at the same time. So I look out for what he does dan what, what's dangerous and then I see how, how people have gotten to him. And, uh, and it seems that people that sit back too much and try to counter punch him, they get in trouble and then people that come forward and attack him do, do a little bit better. Um, for me, I think it's uh, it's gonna be a little different because I kick so much, so I can I could counter kick and, and attack with my punches and, and things like that. And uh, I think cardio is just gonna be a huge key in this fight. This cardio has always been suspect, and I know he made a brutal weight cut and he's not used to it. So I'm gonna push him in the cardio department. And I think this fight will just get more and more one-sided. This is a five-round fight. He's never had a five-round fight, and I know full and well I'm, I'm fully ready for a five-round fight. When you think about Vegas and the history of the fight game, boxing and MMA, so many huge fights have taken place in this city on a personal level what's it mean to you to be the main event of a card in Las Vegas yeah, it's, a, it's a pretty amazing feeling walking around getting freaking just went to Whole Foods to get some recovery food today and uh, and I got a I, I seen a billboard and this huge billboard over over uh, in like uh, Time, what is it, the town square? Yeah. They right over there, and uh, it's just all rock old Jardine, and so it's it's pretty pretty weird to see. You know, it's a it's a trip, but uh, it's and you know I'm seeing cardboard cutouts, life size cardboard cutouts all around the Hard Rock. So I, I plan on to keep this going, and I don't, I don't see it I don't see it stopping. Uh, I'm on my way up, and he's on his way out, and <laughs> things are gonna stay like that after Saturday night. I've said it before, that ain't nothing gonna change. Final one for you, Luke. Tomorrow, as fans watch this tonight.
tonight and they're getting ready for the fight tomorrow. What's your fight day routine? Are you a guy that can stay in his room or does that drive you crazy? Do you have to get out, walk around a little bit, clear your head? Uh, I, I'm a guy that can pretty much stay in my room. I, I, like, to, uh, I like to go rest right now. I'm going to go rest and then I'm going to have a steak dinner with all my boys and, and with a few of the guys and uh, you know I don't want to get too I don't want to bring in my all my friends and family and stuff like that I like to sit around with my fight team and, and just hang with, with people so they're not going to constantly ask you know ask me about this or try to people try to tell me a game plan it's like we know what's going yeah. down and, and we just enjoy our dinner and talk about you know other stuff you know sitting around with family and friends everyone's trying to give you their opinion and how you feel and they're too worried about you so yeah I like to focus and, and stay with uh, with more of my teammates on this one people have been in the gym with me and, and are there for me it's not as much like you know people are not as worried and yeah. always like talking about this and that so I, I, lo I love my fans my family my, my family my friends but uh I'll celebrate with them tomorrow night after I kick some ass. I promise this is the last one, but I, I forgot. I heard a rumor that Herschel Walker, your friend, is coming to town to see you fight. When you think about Herschel Walker, you ever find yourself pinching yourself saying, man, a guy with the college football history, NFL history, Olympian, celebrity apprentice, everything that Herschel has done, author, is close enough friend that he's going to fly to Vegas to watch him in the main event. I would think that's got to be pretty special. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. You know, me and Herschel have got, grown to be uh, good friends over the years. And uh, we both have that competitive spirit. And just, uh, you know, he's a pretty cool guy down to earth. I, I hung with Herschel. I visited with him at his house after our UFC Fan Expo. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a cool dude. I like hanging with him. And, uh, you know, he always tells me he wouldn't miss a fight. So uh, it's uh, it's definitely weird every once in a while. You know, you travel with him. He's, just, he's got so many fans and so many. I, you know, I, he was a little before my time. You know, but I remember watching him growing up, and you can't miss highlights of Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker's amazing, but uh, you know he's 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 one of the best. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I just I just take people for who they are. I've never been like a you know jumping on try to be friends with someone just because of who they are. It's uh, I take people for who they are, and I, and I don't care what kind of celebrities you are. It's, if, if you're cool, you're cool, and you're down to earth. And that's what Herschel is. He's one of the most down to earth, cool guys. And, and you know, it's, for someone who's reached that height and stays humble and as cool as he is. It's, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing. It's something I look forward to, you know, trying to model myself after. And, uh, and you know, those are the type of people you want to be like. Talk about down to earth, cool guys, Luke. It, a lot of time, guys at this point want to just get to the room. I can't thank you enough for taking a couple of minutes, say hi to the fans, let them know how you're feeling. Uh, thank you so much as well for being a clinch gear guy. We're proud to have you. Continued Damn success straight. and keep that belt tomorrow night, buddy. Damn straight, clinch gear. We're taking it tomorrow night. Bell's staying here.